Glory to Jesus Christ, Yehoshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we serve a great God, and he tells us that a soldier does not engage in warfare at his own expense. And therefore, I have labeled this study, Unto You It Is Given, because the Lord has given us so much, and we have to be thankful for all these things that are given us. We turn to the second epistle general of Peter, chapter 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. And so already from the onset, we see that Simon Peter, he has a name, Simon Peter. And when Jesus in Mark chapter 1 called him to the service, he said, come with me and I will make you to become fishers of men. And he was speaking to Simon and Andrew, his brother. That's in Mark chapter 1. And in John chapter 1, he tells Simon Peter, you shall be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. And so Simon Peter, from the onset, has a name given him. And the name that is given him has a meaning concerning the spiritual purpose that he will be serving. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5 teaches us that we are lively stones, built up a spiritual house to the Lord. And therefore, as Jesus had announced, the temple will no longer be a physical temple made of bricks, physical bricks, but rather a spiritual temple made up of lively stones that we are the saints, and Peter was going to be one of them. He was going to be one of these lively stones. And so he was going to be part of God's spiritual house. And therefore, he was going to be a servant who would minister to the Lord Jesus Christ. But he would minister further on top of his general calling. He would minister also in a specialized ministry. He would be an apostle. And so when we read Second Epistle General of Peter, chapter 1, at verse 1, Simon Peter, that is Cephas, he was given a name, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. He is further given a service to fulfill, a position to occupy. You see, in the beginning, in Genesis chapter 2, we find out that the Lord put Adam in the garden to dress it and to till it. Even before Adam was called to this service, the garden had been prepared for him so that he would have a place to exercise his own ministry as a servant of the Almighty God. And so likewise, Simon Peter Cephas also has received a function, a service in the body of Christ. And therefore, he is a servant and an apostle. Remember the apostles are also spoken of as pillars in the spiritual temple of the Lord. They are pillars, meaning they are also taking part in being a foundation to the spiritual house. But we know that the head of the corner is Jesus Christ, the stone that was set aside. And so we go back to 2 Peter verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, and so these elements of Cephas's identity, his name being a spiritual stone, his function, his service as a servant and an apostle, all these are connected to the person of Jesus Christ. And so as Paul also does in his epistles, Peter starts out by identifying himself concerning his spiritual identity and immediately connecting himself to Jesus Christ. In other words, he takes no glory for himself, but rather describes that he is acting under the authority of his master, who is Jesus Christ. And today, brothers and sisters, we have to get back to these fundamentals. We see a lot of people who promote themselves, but are no longer giving Jesus Christ the first place, the highest seat. Yet does the Bible teach us, sit in the back 
when you attend a gathering so that you may have the honor of being called to the front, but do not put yourself up front, lest ye be told to move towards the back and be dishonored. And so Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, because he is the one who gets all the glory. And so the service of Peter, the ministry of Peter, is clearly identified as stemming from Jesus Christ, who is the tree, and Simon Peter, a stone, Cephas, is a branch. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so to them that have obtained like precious faith. And so the faith that he has, he has obtained it. That faith was given him. And when we go to Philippians chapter 1, verse 29, we read that unto us, it is given to have faith, to believe on Jesus Christ, and also to suffer for his sake. But the faith that we have was given us. And so this is something that we have obtained, and it was given us. And so we have obtained a name. We have obtained a position as servants. We have obtained a position as having a ministry under the authority of the Lord. And we have even received faith to believe on him. So getting back to verse 1, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us, all of us have received this faith through the righteousness of God in our Savior Jesus Christ. And we receive this faith through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. God gives us this faith, which only confirms what we just read in Philippians chapter 1, verse 29. Like precious faith with us. And so the idea of fellowship is immediately apparent because there is a communion happening here between those who have obtained like precious faith. And in 1 John chapter 1, we read that John is sharing about the gospel of Jesus Christ as an eyewitness. And a bit further in this first chapter, in verse 16, Peter is indeed establishing that we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. And so in 1 John chapter 1, John is saying the same thing. He examined the word, he heard from the word, he touched the word, he heard from the word of life, which was manifested. And so getting back to the idea of communion, still in 1 John chapter 1, these things are shared to us by John so that our joy can be full and so that we can have fellowship with him and all saints so that ultimately our fellowship and communion is with the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And this is why in 2 Peter chapter 1, we read about how those who have obtained like precious faith with us because there is a common faith that we have all received. Remember when Jesus told his disciples, when they asked him, why do you speak in parables? He told them to you, this group of believers who are my disciples, to you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but to the others outside it is not given. And so there is a people who have received this faith, who have received the gift of understanding the mysteries of the kingdom of God. They have received a name. They have received a ministry. They have received a service to be operated under the authority of Jesus Christ. And all this through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. And so it is not of ourselves. Indeed, salvation is a gift as we know from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 10. And even the works that we do have been prepared for us since past eternity. Let us go back to 2 Peter chapter 1. We are at verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And so you receive grace you receive peace multiplied because of the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord by way of the faith that you obtained. 
you now believe on the Lord and he teaches you all things so that you can have knowledge of him. 1 John chapter 2, verse 27 teaches us that when we receive the Spirit, we receive an anointing that allows us to be taught all things by the Holy Spirit of the Lord, so that we do not need a man to teach us. And so it is important that we receive knowledge, and therefore the Lord instructs us personally, so that through this knowledge, we come to a better knowing of Him, in whom it was given us to have faith on Him. And so this is important. We see that through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we have obtained like precious faith with others, but also through the knowledge now of God and of Jesus our Lord, grace and peace are multiplied. Unto you it was given to have a name. Unto you it was given to have a service. Unto you it was given to have a specific ministry. Under the authority of Jesus Christ, whom we put up front, in the forefront where he belongs, he and him alone, to him all the glory, for he doesn't share his glory. And then we have received the ability to understand the secrets and mysteries of the kingdom, and we have further received the ability to fellow and have fellowship with those who have obtained like precious faith, a faith that we have all received, that has been given us. And lastly, we are given knowledge by way of the instruction of the Holy Ghost and those who are established teachers and through whom the Holy Ghost is teaching us about the person of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Because if we want to fulfill the first commandment, which is to love the Lord with all our heart, understanding that he is one, and we can read about that in Mark chapter 12, then do we need knowledge about his person, about who he is, his character, his expectations, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Again, it is according to his divine power that we are given all things that pertain unto life and godliness. And we will be listing those in a second. But we understand again that these things are given us. Brothers and sisters, we have been given so much by the Lord. We ought to worship him with every breath. Through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. And so you have been called to glory and virtue. You did not make the call yourself. God loved you first, and God called you. No one can come to him unless he draws them in. And therefore, you were given the call that you received. And he drew you in, meaning that it was given you to come to the Lord and receive that faith that we spoke about. And then, you received the name, the service, the ministry under the authority of Jesus Christ, whom you proclaim to be your God. And through the knowledge of him, you now have received and been given grace and peace multiplied. But also, you've been given all things that pertain unto life and godliness, of which we will be making a listing shortly. And how do you receive all of these things? through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. And therefore, there is a glory and a virtue that are given you through the knowledge of him. And these things pertain unto life and godliness. So let us go into that deeper. Verse 4, whereby are given, again the word given, unto us exceeding great and precious promises, you have been given promises. One of them which is outstanding is that you will have eternal life, as we read in the book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 2. In hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. And so this is an outstanding promise that we have of eternal life, 
This is why the Lord in John chapter 14 tells us, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And so there is a promise that there is a land flowing with milk and honey that awaits you. There is eternal life awaiting for you, and it is given you. These promises are given you, and they are plural. There are many. I will never forsake you. I am with you until the end of time. Call upon me, and I will deliver you. Psalm chapter 50, verse 15. And so the Lord has made great and precious promises, and we know that in him all promises are yea and amen. Oh, what surety we have with the Lord. Going back to verse 4, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And therefore we are given great and precious promises, and it is given us to be partakers of the divine nature. And this, as we saw in verse 3, through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue. Because, still in verse 3, he has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Amen? And so godliness, the divine nature, all things are given us so that we can achieve it. And it happens in stages. This is why in Philippians chapter 3, Paul says that he is walking towards perfection and has not yet attained. So perfection is a process. Indeed, in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 7 and in 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 12, were instructed and educated about the fact that we will go through fire so that our faith is tested, but that the end result of this is that we acquire patience. Because according to Acts 14.22, it is by way of many tribulations that we must enter into the kingdom of God. And so let us look at how this operates, step by step. We go to verse 5, 2 Peter chapter 1. Verse 5, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. We saw that the starting point was that faith was given us, Philippians 1.29, and it starts there. Faith is the evidence of things unseen. Faith is the belief in things we cannot see, and yet do we have a hope based on that faith. Add to your faith virtue. And so faith is the starting point. We were given faith, according to Philippians chapter 1, verse 29. Unto you it is given to believe on Jesus Christ. And we must add on virtue. And to virtue, knowledge. Knowledge, because we have to come into the knowledge of who our Lord Jesus Christ is, so that we can truly love him with all our heart. And if we read in 1 John chapter 2, John is saying in verses 13 and 14 that we have the victory because we have not only overcome the wicked one, because we come to know who the Father is. We come into the knowledge of he who is from the beginning. And it is by way of the acquiring of this knowledge, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, according to verse 3, that we then become beneficiaries of all those great and precious promises that are made to us, spoken of in verse 4. And so, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge, because we need to know the Lord. And once we know the Lord, we will now add temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience, godliness. And so the acquiring of temperance, the acquiring of patience is done through trials. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, and 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12, teach us that we will be going through a furnace, and we ought not to wonder how that is. It is because our faith needs to be tried, even by fire, so that it may be found precious, more precious than gold and silver that perish. And through this process of perfection, 
as we did mention that Paul specified, we acquire temperance, patience, and once we go through that, this is when we achieve godliness. And once you achieve godliness, you acquire a divine quality. And just like the Lord, our God, who is love, according to 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, you receive the love of the Lord in you so that you can now execute the second commandment, which is to love your neighbor as yourself. And therefore, the love that you receive of the Lord, which you reciprocate towards him, that's the first commandment, to love him with all your heart, knowing that he is one, and loving him with all your being and all your strength. Once you do that, that love in you also now becomes outward towards others, your brothers and sisters, towards other human beings. So you can display and manifest love toward them. And that's when you have brotherly love. And so the brotherly love that we read in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, that brotherly kindness, that brotherly love, that charity, which is love that is disinterested, the agape love, it necessarily comes after you have achieved a state of godliness because it stems from godliness to be able to manifest brotherly love and charity in turn. Now, we know from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, that out of faith, hope, and charity, charity is the greatest. Paul will say, without charity, I am like sounding brass, even though I may have many other abilities and talents and gifts. And so charity is the end point. And the beginning point is faith, as we saw in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. And so we see here a progression, brothers and sisters. Unto you it is given to have faith in the first instance, and then this faith allows you to have hope in the person of Jesus Christ in whom you have come to have faith in. And this faith, by way of your belief on Jesus Christ, allows you to have hope in the promises that he has set out for you to believe in. And because you have this hope that is rooted in your faith, it brings you to a relationship with the Lord where you go through perfection and acquire virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, which leads you to brotherly kindness, brotherly love, and charity. Being perfected, you go from faith to having hope and sustaining that hope to get to the end point of charity, which is manifesting love after you've achieved a state of godliness. And so there's a nice progression here, and many elements are coming together here and meshing perfectly. Unto you it is given to have faith. And Hebrews chapter 11 tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so faith is the substance of things hoped for. And so from faith, there stems hope because we have belief on the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is a hope that we will see the fulfilling of all the promises that he has made to us. And then we move on through perfection to a relationship with the Lord that we may be holy as he is holy and therefore can manifest the brotherly kindness and ultimately the charity, the love of God who is love himself. And all these things, as we just said in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, are given to us. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. And so through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, we acquire all things that pertain unto life and godliness. And we have just mentioned that in order to get to godliness, we need to first be tried and go through perfection, starting out at the beginning, the starting point, which is faith. And then we grow and acquire virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, and then godliness. And this godliness then allows us to manifest brotherly kindness. And the brotherly kindness allows us to manifest charity. And now getting back to the top, 
we understand that all these things are given us. Unto you it is given. Verse 8, For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so as you draw closer to the Lord and draw nigh to him, and your knowledge of him increases, you become more and more like him. Be ye holy, for I am holy. A disciple will become like his master. Simon was promised that he would become a fisher of man, and this would only be possible once he would have put on Christ, so that it would no longer be him that liveth, but Christ living in him. Verse 9. But he that lacketh these things is blind, and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so at verse 9, there is a warning that we must not lack these things. And when we speak about these things that can make us blind if we do not have them, we are brought back to verses 3 and 4, where we are given all things that pertain unto life and godliness, where we are given exceeding great and precious promises. And all these things we are given through the knowledge of him that has called us, so that likewise grace and peace are multiplied through the knowledge of Jesus our Lord. And so this is expressed in verses 2 to 4. So brothers and sisters, if we look back on what we have established, unto you it is given. What exactly is given unto you? It is given unto you to have a name. In the case of Simon Peter, Cephas, a stone, a spiritual stone, who will make up the spiritual house of the Lord Jesus Christ. And more specifically, beyond being a servant, he will have a specialized ministry as an apostle and therefore will be a pillar in the house of the Lord. So it is given him to have a name, given to him to have a service and a specialized ministry. It is given him to have precious faith. Alongside all those who are given faith, like he is given faith, Philippians 1.29, unto you it is given to have faith on him. And all these things are given you through the righteousness of the Lord and not of your own strength, which is why you can do all things through Christ. And unto you it is given to have fellowship with people who have obtained the same precious faith with you. And so there is a fellowship given you, not only with your brothers, but also with the Lord Jesus Christ, ultimately. Confirming the commandments in that you must love the Lord with all your heart, who is one, and you have fellowship with him. But at the same time, you also have fellowship with your fellow brothers and sisters whom you are called to love as yourself. But not only them, but also everybody in the world, you are to love them. But you will, however, have a fellowship in the faith with the brothers and sisters who have believed and obtained this precious faith as you have. 1 John chapter 1 speaks about this communion, this fellowship with the believers and with the Lord. And so you have received, according to divine power, all things that pertain unto life and godliness, and this by way of your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, being instructed in his ways, being instructed by him, by the anointing that you receive through the Holy Spirit. And so it is given unto you to receive all things that pertain unto life and godliness. It is further given unto you to receive exceeding great and precious promises, including eternal life. And by the process of perfection, through which you are given these things that pertain unto life and godliness, you are being refined as you are put in the fire for your faith to be tried. And so by going through these trials, 
You who start out by receiving faith, which is the starting point, you move on to virtue and you move on to the knowledge of the Lord, deepening your knowledge of him, drawing nigh to him, getting closer to him. And this knowledge brings you to temperance and then to patience as you're going through tribulations. And then when you have been tried in the fire, your faith is found to be precious, more than silver and gold that perish, and you achieve godliness. You have the mind of Christ, spoken of in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. You have put on Christ. You are a new creature. Old things have passed away, and now all things are new. And having this state of godliness, having received the love of God in you, God who has loved you first, God who is love, having received his love, you are now in a position to not only reciprocate that love towards the Lord, according to the first commandment, but according to the second commandment, you're able to love others as yourselves, which becomes an outward manifestation of godliness in that you can manifest brotherly kindness and ultimately charity, which is agape love, disinterested love, unconditional love. And as Paul mentions in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, when we look at the progression that we have just described, we go from faith as a starting point and then look at hope, which is rooted in faith, because faith is the substance of things hoped for. And then we end up with charity, which is the end point of our perfection to where we can manifest the divine nature of God in this world. And this is how we shine as lights in the world. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we have faith, hope, and charity, the greatest being charity. And therefore, we can make a connection between 1 Corinthians 13 and 13 and the progression that is being described here in 2 Peter chapter 1, when we are looking at the transformation that we undergo by way of perfection in acquiring all these divine qualities through the knowledge of him, which allows us to benefit from his grace and his peace. And so this confirms that in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are complete in him, which confirms Colossians chapter 2 verse 10, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. And Colossians chapter 2, verse 3, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And so when we make mention of knowledge as an essential requirement, because it is through this knowledge that we receive those things given us, we have confirmation in Colossians chapter 2, verse 3, that it is indeed in Jesus Christ that are hid all the treasures of wisdom and also knowledge. And so, brothers and sisters, unto us were given great gifts by the Lord, and we have seen them, and it makes us realize that we are fortunate to have such a great Lord, and that we ought to worship him properly, understanding that the glory is his and his alone. For by grace are ye saved, and not of yourself. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 10. Brothers and sisters, you have been given a name, a service, a ministry. You've been given like precious faith. You've been given a fellowship, a communion with the Lord and with others. Grace and peace have been multiplied unto you. All things that pertain unto life and godliness have been given unto you and are nurtured through the knowledge of him who has called you to glory and virtue. You've been given the opportunity to be called. You've been given the opportunity to understand the mysteries of the kingdom while it has not been given to others. You are given exceeding great and precious promises, including eternal life. And it has been given unto you to have faith on him, but also to suffer for his sake which means that you go through a process of perfection 
through which you also receive other things given to you as you are being perfected and through perfection, through tribulation, you are given a divine nature that you acquire by stages, receiving first faith and then acquiring virtue, knowledge, and then temperance, patience, and eventually godliness, which brings you to the end point where you can manifest the nature of the Lord, the divine nature of the Lord, having his mind, having put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can display brotherly kindness and charity, which is the end point, as we saw in 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, starting out in faith and ending through hope in charity. And so if these things be in you, you will be equipped and able to run the good race until the end so that you do not fall and so that you can make your calling and election sure. And so that you can claim that inheritance in the heavens, for there is a mansion prepared for you, so that you can have an entrance ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who did say, my kingdom is not of this world. His kingdom is his heavenly. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for the breath of life, for your words, for your counsel, and your might. May you all be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior. Amen.